You and I are on a mission. We've traveled back in time to meet a very important person. Let's call him Tom. He asks us, what do 21st century Americans enjoy eating? And we look at each other and we say, take out lo mein. In 21st century America, you can find takeout lo mein in just about any small town or city in America, no problem. And lo mein is hit and miss. You can get amazing lo mein or eh, not so good. So how can we make Tom the best lo mein possible with 18th century ingredients? Our time machine has landed us in 1793, and all we have are the clothes on our back. We have to make do with the ingredients that we can find here in the 18th century. At this point in American history, nobody has any idea what lo mein is. They're not even really familiar with noodles. They have a slight idea about pasta, but luckily Tom is a pasta fan. And he has also an interest in Chinese culture and philosophy. So he's the perfect person to bring this to. Some of this is gonna be very easy. Our vegetables, cabbage, onion, and carrots. No problem. We need uh, certain kinds of cuts of meat, which we can do. And then the real difficulty, both the noodles and what are we gonna use for soy sauce? And of course, the cooking technique, totally different than early America. Let's start with the foundation. You can't have great lo mein without great noodles. Thankfully, Tom is familiar with pasta. He spent time in Europe as a diplomat. He loved macaroni. That was his thing. And so he even had made for him a macaroni machine. And we even have a document with a picture where he drew a macaroni machine and this is how it was made. In fact, on the back of that, this is the best part, he gives us a pasta recipe so we know exactly what his noodles can be made like. His recipe goes like this. Six eggs, yolks and whites, two wine glasses of milk, two pounds of flour, a little salt, then work them together without water very well and roll with a roller until it's paper thin. The title of Tom's recipe is for macaroni. Of course, it's pasta. We can turn it into whatever shape we please. It'll make perfect lo mein noodles. To make it a lot easier, I'm cutting this into strips. Then as I roll it out, I can get it to that paper thin thickness that he talks about in the recipe. Our next major struggle is going to be soy sauce. Can you even imagine lo mein without soy sauce? I mean, it is the marker for this dish. We have to have something that's just like that. Luckily, here in the late 18th century, we have an umami replacement for that, and that is mushroom ketchup. We might need to adjust it a little bit, but I think that will give us the flavor we really need for lo mein. We have another problem with this sauce. We need a thickener, something that will make it stick to those noodles. We can't use cornstarch, and we certainly can't use flour. Ugh, that would be terrible. So we have to find a replacement for that to make it really bind together. We're going to use honey because it'll give us that thickening agent as well as the sweetener. It starts off with a cup of chicken broth. Then we have our soy sauce substitute, which is our mushroom ketchup. Then we have the sweetener and the thickener to this. That's the honey in this case. We've got a little bit of pepper, a dash of oil in here. And then for our oyster sauce, I've got this super thickened mushroom ketchup. That's very powerful stuff, so I don't think we're gonna need much. We need a marinade for our meat. Very, very simple. We've got five components here. Uh, a little bit of wine, a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of sugar and a little mushroom ketchup. We're just gonna put that on and get this meat marinated. 
We also have the difficulty of cooking technique as well as equipment. There's nothing like a wok here in late 18th century America. So we're gonna have to use a regular pan. I've got some ideas about how we can make this work, but this is not gonna be easy. And we've come all this way. I mean, I want this to be great for Tom. Today we're using the double brazier in the kitchen, and this is something that they would use many times in the kitchens of an 18th century setting. They would have a brazier where they would use charcoal for a clear, smokeless fire. Now, it is not safe to use this in a modern kitchen because it exhausts carbon monoxide, but we have an 18th century kitchen here. There's lots of ventilation and we're paying attention. Once our noodles are boiled enough, it's time to strain them and place a little bit of oil on them so they don't clump together. Next up, our vegetables. We're gonna start cutting up our cabbage and our onion. We're gonna cook these vegetables in a hot pan. You don't want them to burn, you want them to stay crispy, so only cook them about a minute. A little more oil goes in the pan and now the marinated steak. We're gonna to toss these in that pan and just let them cook. Don't stir them around. And then as soon as they are browned, that browning comes up around the outside of the meat, we can stir that until they are cooked all through. We're gonna put these with our cooked vegetables to wait for just a second. Now into this pan goes minced ginger. We only need about a teaspoon full. Just let this cook until it gives you that wonderful ginger aroma. Now we start to reintroduce our components. In go our noodles. We're gonna move them over to the side of our pan and introduce a quarter of a cup of dry sherry. Now we can move the noodles back over. And on top of that goes the pre-cooked meat and vegetables. Incorporate this all together. Now we're gonna slide this over in the pan yet again, and then our pre-prepared main sauce goes into the side of the pan, not on top. We're gonna to let this cook just a little bit, and we can watch it start to thicken up in the pan. As soon as that thickens up, now we're gonna stir this all together. Be gentle, don't break those noodles. Top this off with green onion, and then it's ready to come off and serve into our bowl. I love the way this looks and smells. I can't wait to try this out. I can just guess that that mushroom ketchup is gonna be such a great substitute for soy sauce. And then that marinated meat, oh, it smells great. And the vegetables and the noodles, I really wanna try out those noodles. And a special thanks, before I try this out, to Jason Farmer. Make sure to check out his channel. He helped us out a lot with getting this right. So let's give this a try. This is great. It fits all the flavor notes. I love it, and Tom's gonna love it too. 